let's just discuss dopaminergic pathways. Um, dopamine actually goes all throughout the brain. There's a couple pathways that it's um, that it goes through. Specifically, there's four of them that we're going to talk about. The first one, uh, they're all illustrated in this picture on the right. The first one is the mesocortical pathway, and so the dopamine goes through the cortex. So um, you can kind of actually guess the symptoms. When you have decreased activity, so decreased dopamine, you get the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. It's apathy, no energy. And I think this makes sense because in the cortex, cortex, if you remember, uh, what is its function? It's like personality, it's for uh, thinking, concentration, um, things like that. Um, so I think if you decrease that, you, what you're going to get is just these negative symptoms. You become flat, you become just like a nothing, if apathy, no energy. Uh, the mesolimbic pathway, on the other hand, is um, it's kind of like the limbic system, is what I think of, like the amygdala, the hippocampus. So if you increase the activity here, if you have increased dopamine activity, you're going to get the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, you're going to hallucinations, delusions. Um, it's, that makes sense. Limbic system is the motions, the amygdala, you go to, it goes to crazy, and then you get hallucinations. That's the way I think about it. I want to note here the antipsychotic drugs, which are the, these are the dopamine antagonists, the blockers. They mainly act on the positive symptoms and not on the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Again, that makes sense. You're blocking dopamine, so obviously it would work where there's increased activity, which is the uh, the positive symptoms, and not where there's ready decreased activity. You're blocking ready decreased activity. Uh, you're not going to make things better here. Uh, next is the nigrostriatal nigro pathway. When we just talked about this. Um, we talked about how the the dopamine in the basic ganglia goes to the striatum, and it actually promotes movement. So if you have decreased activity here, obviously you're going to have decreased movement. So that's where you get Parkinsonism. You also get some other um, symptoms called extrapyramidal symptoms like dystonia, achesthesia, and tardive dyskinesia. We can talk about that more in the uh, psychiatric lectures. Finally, we have the tuberal and fundibular pathway. Um, this basically arises because um, it's the general principle, excuse me, that dopamine, oh, oops, dopamine blocks prolactin. That's from the endocrine lectures. So if you're going to decrease activity, you're going to increase your prolactin. And increased prolactin will present with uh, galacteria, that's increased milk from the nipples, and you're also going to have um, low libido and uh, sexual dysfunction because prolactin going to block GnRH. Okay, this is all a bunch of endocrine stuff. Uh, but that's it. That's a little summary of all the ways that dopamine can act on the brain and what can happen when it goes wrong.